Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Ploopy Trackpad. Now, Ploopy is a company with a kind of funny name that makes some enthusiast-level hardware for input on computers. Uh, so they make a pair of headphones for some reason as well, but they really got their start making sort of a open hardware trackball mouse at a time when there weren't a lot of companies making trackballs. Uh, since then, they've expanded into a couple of other different territories. So they have a couple of different trackballs, they have a mouse, and they have this touchpad, and they also have... Uh, a dial or a, a knob that they put out that's just sort of a little dial that you can use to control volume or scroll or do other things. But the touchpad is the thing that I was particularly interested in because there aren't a lot of companies that are making USB or, or wireless uh, touchpads for Windows or Linux computers. If you have a Mac, you can use Apple's Magic Trackpad. If you have Windows, there's a bunch of sort of inexpensive things available on Amazon or AliExpress, but they all get kind of mediocre reviews in terms of performance and reliability. So this is, uh, even though it's made from 3D printed parts and it comes from a company with a funny name, this is a device that has Windows Precision driver support and should be able to do everything that a good touchpad can do. And I really was in the market for a touchpad because I've got a issue that sort of limits my mobility with my thumb at the moment. So previously, due to sort of hand and wrist issues, I've used a vertical mouse, and that sort of helps with the wrist a little bit. I recently got uh, the Logitech MX Ergo, which eh, it's a little bit more comfortable to hold, sure, but with all of these, you're sort of using your thumb a little bit too much. And I'd also use the uh, the Kensington Expert uh, wireless mouse, which great if you're just sort of using these features, but it can be kind of hard to avoid clicking with your thumb on that as well. So overall, I was really thinking if I want to be able to sort of continue to do my work that largely involves using computers, I was looking for a device that I could navigate without necessarily having to use my thumb very much. And this works really pretty well for that because like a good touchpad on a laptop, it supports single touch, multi-touch, two finger, three finger, four finger, and so forth gestures, and lets you get just about everything done that you need to get done. Now, it is a relatively simple device that doesn't click, it doesn't have a haptic motor, so there is no real feedback. Uh, so you just sort of have to trust that it's working, but if you're paying attention to what's happening on your computer as you click, as you double click, as you uh, two finger tap or swipe, you'll notice if it's working or not. And uh, overall, I found it relatively comfortable to use, and I'll give you a demonstration in a moment. Uh, in terms of hardware, what you've got is pretty much what you see. It's a 3D printed case with a sort of textured design here, or a textured finish on the top. Uh, at first, I wasn't sure how I would like that because I'm used to sort of the smoother glass touchpad on my laptop, but it's pretty comfortable and it feels good to sort of move your hand around and it's nice and large. Uh, there are sort of dead zones along the bottom and the right and left sides, but it's really thin and most of this area is touch sensitive. And then there's maybe a strip or along the top that's a little, little bit larger because there's electronic components underneath it that is uh, not touch sensitive. But everything else basically works. So you can place your finger almost anywhere on here and navigate. On the sides, you'll notice there's uh, screws sort of holding the case together. On the back, we've got a USB Type-C port and another screw and the Ploopy logo and a garage for this really kind of cheap, inexpensive, uh, capacitive touch stylus with a little bit of a sort of mushy rubber tip. Uh, you can use it a little bit for input, but overall, I think using your finger probably makes more sense. Uh, it's an interesting use of this additional space here, but it doesn't really add a ton of functionality, I, I wouldn't say. On the bottom, we have these sort of little cork friction pads that are supposed to hold it in place. Uh, I have found that it will slide a little bit. It's actually not so bad right here, but on my on my other desk, it slides a little bit. So I just sort of put a mouse pad underneath it, and then it holds itself in place pretty well from the friction there. And then there's this little um, door here where it says bootloader. And if you open that up, which I'm not going to do right now, but you can find a picture at lilliputin.com, you'll access a small portion of the printed circuit board beneath that has two points that you need to bridge with a paper clip or a pair of tweezers or something if you want to enter bootloader mode. And that's one of the interesting things about this is if you do that, you plug it into a computer with a USB cable and you can copy new firmware onto it. So anytime you want to change the firmware, which is based on QMK, uh, you can do that just by entering bootloader mode, plugging it into a computer, drag and drop, and then just sort of unplug, plug back in and you're good to go running the new version of the firmware. 
Uh, earlier versions made it a little bit too easy, perhaps, to get into that firmware uh, update menu or that bootloader mode. And so this might err on the side of making it a little bit more challenging because you do have to sort of unscrew that, hold the connection while you plug it in, but it means that you're not likely to do it by accident. All right, so how does it perform? Let's take a look. Um, if I can figure out what I did with that USB cable. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to my laptop, which is an Asus uh, Zephyrus, or ROG Zephyrus G14, um, or ROG, I feel like you're supposed to say the letters, not actually say ROG. Um, it is a laptop that actually has a pretty excellent uh, built-in trackpad, but I don't find it particularly ergonomically comfortable to use a touchpad below the keyboard and sort of hold your hands in this position. And when I'm working at home, I often position the laptop so that it's on a um, stand next to my monitor, and then I use a plug-in keyboard. So this allows me to sort of set things up in this kind of format where the trackpad is going to be next to my keyboard. So this isn't quite what it looks like at my desk, but it's easier to uh, video over here. And so we've got this sitting next to it. So in terms of size, you'll notice that it's actually substantially larger. Um, physically, this is about seven inches by about five inches versus five inches by about three inches. So you have sort of more space here, even though there are little uh, dead zones around the edges. And it means that you don't really have to look at it very much while you're using it. And it uh, does a pretty good job of sort of recognizing your touch input. Uh, if we go ahead and sort of open a web browser here, take a look, we can support multi-touch gestures like pinch to zoom. It supports uh, horizontal and vertical scrolling. It um, supports uh, sort of inertial scrolling, so you can sort of drag and let it keep going. And then you've got multi-touch gestures like three finger swipes and so forth. So overall, it works pretty much just the way that I would expect any good touchpad on the laptop, but it works without necessarily relying on uh, being built into that laptop. So it, it works great on my desk. Um, I will say that the thing that I sort of do most um, other than blogging or web browsing that requires precise input would be editing audio. And for that, um, I've noticed that from time to time, probably should have opened this before I started the video, from time to time when I'm doing sort of precise actions, it's a little bit less precise than I would like uh, from a mouse, and so I'm a little bit slower getting work done when editing complex audio projects. Uh, let me change my audio device because I'm not plugged into, there we go, when I'm doing complex audio projects like this. Uh, so there are some gestures that I actually really like that are on a touchpad such as uh, the ability to sort of use two fingers to scroll left and right. Um, I can use two fingers to scroll in and out. But in terms of sort of positioning it exactly where you want it to be, sometimes I find it a little bit more precise to do that with a mouse. And another thing that was a little bit difficult was uh, this motion of sort of drag and select from multiple clips is something that traditionally, uh, or out of the box, Reaper expects it to be a two click or a right click and drag. And that just didn't work because two clicks here makes it want to scroll left and right. So I actually had to go into the Reaper settings and reconfigure that. So without having access to a physical right click button, uh, you might need to sort of reconfigure some software or make some other changes because certain things just might not work the way you expect them to. Now, there are workarounds. For instance, if you have enough space on your desk and if you already happen to have another input device, you can also do things like right click on that device and then single click with this one. Um, assuming it's connected properly, which it doesn't seem to be at the moment. But at my desk, normally that works uh, reasonably well. Um, I think it's not working because the dongle is plugged into uh, something else. Um, but if you have a Bluetooth device or some other device, you could also use that. So theoretically, uh, you could use multiple input devices, put one on each side and use them for input that way. Uh, the other thing that I'd noticed is I spend a lot of time sort of in audio editing software doing this sort of motion where I uh, try to position the mouse and you'll notice it just stopped working on the left side. A moment ago, I was able to click there and now I can't. I wasn't sure if I would be able to demonstrate that in this video, but I did. I'm gonna click closer to the middle of the trackpad 
and it's working just fine, and now the left side is working again. So from time to time, I've noticed that it just sort of stops recognizing after a second or third click. And in order to fix that, I just need to click somewhere else. But it just reminds me that I sort of have the best performance if I don't use that left edge. I don't know if this is a widespread issue or if it's just an issue affecting my particular unit, but it is kind of the one annoying thing, uh, especially because it's the sort of thing where you might not notice it's happening until you know, you've tried to do some sort of precise motion where you've selected something and then you're trying to delete and then you're going over here and you say, I want to select that and I want to delete and then you click again and it doesn't work. So that's a little bit frustrating, but it's not quite the end of the world because you notice the fix was just as simple as saying, oh, it didn't work, click here and now I'm good. I didn't have to unplug it, reboot it, reconfigure it, do anything like that. So it's the sort of thing where if you're paying attention, it's not going to be a huge issue, but I do find it to be a slight speed bump that sort of notches, you know, knocks a, a point or two off of my wholehearted recommendation for this. That said, there are so few companies offering anything that does what the Pluby trackpad does that even though it's a niche device from a niche company that really sort of focuses on products that, you know, you can't necessarily find from mainstream companies, um, you know, it's, it's probably more reliable and, and uh, a better option than some of the cheaper trackpads that you might find from no-name companies on Amazon, AliExpress, and other places like that. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and especially as a way, you know, since I do have these other devices, so on days when I'm not feeling as much pain in my thumb, I might switch to this for a little while, get a little bit of work done, and then switch back here. Another thing that I found when using this from an ergonomic perspective is that my posture just tends to be better. It's a lot easier and more natural to sort of hold your uh, wrist in the way that you're supposed to, where it's kind of floating above when you're using a touchpad, as opposed to when you're using a mouse, even an ergonomic mouse, you kind of want to just sort of rest your arm on the table. And that's not great because it means you're putting more strain on the wrist instead of using your arm. So for a bunch of reasons, I'm actually really happy to add this to my list of input devices that I'm using. I think it's been overall a pretty good addition to, to the household. That said, um, it's not necessarily going to be the best option for everybody. It's not a completely inexpensive device. Ploopy sells two versions, well, three if you count the fact that it comes in black or gray color options. I chose black because it just fit with everything else I've got a little bit better. Um, but you can either buy it as a fully configured unit for $135 Canadian, um, or you can buy it as a uh, kit, which means that you have to do a little bit of assembly yourself. Um, and that version is about $30 cheaper Canadian. Also, since it's shipping from Canada and I ordered it in the US, it took about two weeks to arrive. About a week of that is the amount of time it took to get through customs. So overall shipping was relatively quick, but um, you know, it's not a super inexpensive device. It is maybe a little bit cheaper than this MX Ergo mouse uh, when you convert from Canadian to US dollars. Um, but when you count for shipping, uh, versus taxes, it's maybe about a wash. You know, I would say I probably spent around $120, $130 on, on each of those two devices. So it's a it's a relatively premium purchase, uh, especially if you already have a laptop with a touchpad. If I could have just taken this out and put it next to here, I probably wouldn't have bought a separate device. But because of the way that I use these at home, I did find it handy to be able to buy a, uh, a Ploopy trackpad. And overall, I'd say I'm about 85 to 90% happy with the purchase. So just wanted to share some uh, impressions and uh, some information. You can find some more photos and additional information plus links uh, to Ploopy in the uh, description of this video and at lilliputing.com.